Hey guys, welcome back. In, we are starting a new series and this is again based on a lot of requests. I know we were working on CCNA, but now based on the new demand, we going to record a new series which is surrounding around a very hot topic into the service provider industry nowadays, which is the segment routing. If some of you have any kind of a background in the routing and switching, and if you worked in the service provider network like MPLS and all, so you would probably understand the industry or the service providers are migrating or moving away from the MPLS and they are trying to take advantage of this segment routing. So in this series, we will go ahead and explore what is segment routing and definitely followed by a great you know, solid hands-on. We will be spending quite a bit of time on the hands-on because hands-on is really important. At the same time, we need to know the concepts. So for this series, I am not writing any of my own material. I am using the material provided by segment-routing.net guys. And thanks to these folks, all the credit goes to them in terms of putting these great content out there. I will use that content and introduce you all with the segment routing and see how what are the advantages that segment routing brings on top of the MPLS. And how would you really go ahead and start configuring the segment routing into an environment? So without any further ado and delay, let's go ahead and take a look at what is really segment routing. So before we really understand the segment routing, we need to uh, understand a few terminologies. So within the segment routing, we have a concept of something called source routing. So for the network that you work, primarily they were the, based on the destination routing. That means, okay, hey, you know, I'm configuring a route or I need to reach a certain route. Basically, we were always interested in reaching to a certain destination. But on the other hand, the segment routing is really about the source routing. Here, the source will choose a path and it will encode that path in the form of a headers or in the form of a segment. And then it kind of you know, works through that one. So segment routing is really about the source routing. And again, as we progress further, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these things and we'll dissect. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is segment routing here. And again, uh, thanks to these guys who have put this great content. Again, you can go ahead and take a look at this content segment-routing.net website. So let's go ahead and take a look at, as the name says, segment routing. So segment routing is all about the source routing. So here we'll have a source that will go ahead and choose a path and it will encode it in the form of a packet in the packet header as an ordered list of segments. So something important to pay attention is the ordered list of segments. So now we need to really understand what is a segment. A segment is an identifier for any type of instruction. So basically it's an identifier that will tell, okay, hey, what do you want to do with that particular segment like forwarding or a service. And in this particular series, we will go ahead and look at this segment routing from the perspective of the IGP. So we'll use IGP based forwarding construct. So now in terms of looking at the forwarding plane, so segment routing can have two types of forwarding plane. It can have an MPLS based forwarding plane or it can have an IPv6 based forwarding plane. So in this series, we will go ahead and focus around the MPLS. So MPLS, an ordered list of segment is represented as a stack of labels. So if you have worked with the MPLS, MPLS all about all, your label switching. So now again, we are talking about the labels here. The same concept of the label applies onto the segment routing. So segment routing will reuse MPLS data plane without any change. So we can go ahead and make use of the existing MPLS data plane. Now the segments are represented as MPLS label. So like the way the labels were being represented as MPLS, it will be the same thing the segment will be represented now. And we can go ahead and use the same MPLS forwarding plane for both for IPv4 as well as for IPv6. There is another type of forwarding plane that will not explore in this series is the IPv6 space. Is an order list of segment is encoded in routing extension header. So in this case, we will go ahead and make extensions to the existing header of your IPv6. So we will focus around the MPLS as the data plane for this particular series again. So when we work with the segment routing, we just talked about the segments. And if you recall, segment was is nothing but just simply an identifier of any type of instruction. So the instruction was either a forwarding or a service. So now there are two types of segment that we primarily get to see with the segment routing. There is something called global segment and there is something called local segment. 
as the name says global. So let's say you are creating a topology. In that topology, you got certain routers and each router in the topology will, you want to have them uniquely identified. So in that case, you will go ahead and give those each router a unique ID, which is unique in terms of that whole network. So those are basically the global. So any node, that's what he says, any node. So think of as a node as a router. Any node or router in a segment routing domain understands associated instruction. Also each node, again each router in segment routing domain installs the associated instruction in its forwarding table. So now we are talking about the forwarding table. MPLS global value is segment routing global block. So in the case of these global values, when we go ahead and start configuring or start assigning these global segment to any of our node, we go ahead and configure a global block of labels and that global block is something called SRGB, Segment Routing Global Block. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this further. Now there is something called local segment. So the global segment, that means it's a unique throughout your domain and it cannot be duplicate. It's a way of identifying, let's say, node into your topology. While on the other end, the local segment, only originating node understand associated. So that means the node, it is only a local significance, means the node where this label or the segment is getting originated is only significant to that particular node. And it has no global significance. And again, if it's some of these things not making sense, don't worry. We'll go ahead and explore them as we move more into the practical. So just keep in mind, there are two types of segment that we are dealing with. One is global segment and one is your local segment. Again, the local segment are MPLS based locally allocated labels. These are your locally allocated labels. So we just talked about the sRGB, which is your segment routing global block. So your global segments always distributed as a label range. So you will have an sRGB, which is your base number, and then you will go ahead and configure an index value. So now what it says, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. Best practice, hey, when you are configuring a segment routing global block, try to keep it same across all the nodes, even though you can use a different range, but Cisco really recommends as one of the best practice to keep it same because it makes our life, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot, way easy. And the reason we'll go ahead and next and take a look at some of these things later on. So the default sRGB block starts from 16,000. Anything less than 16,000 are the fixed or labels, which are reserved labels. And anything that starts from 24,000 are your dynamic labels and you will get to see both this particular range as well as your dynamic range labels other vendor also use this particular label range so that means your by default your srgb starts from 16000 so when we said srgb we were referring to the 16000 as the base number and on top of that we can go ahead and configure an index value we need to keep in mind that index needs to be fall within this particular range so if i'll say srgb plus index value one so that means i'm saying 16000 plus one so my first router unique ID into the network is 16001. Now similarly for my next router, I can say sRGB plus index of two. That means my next router has an global index value of 16002 in the network. And that's how I can go ahead and identify my nodes into my network. Now, when we talk about, there is, this is something called the IGP segments. So these IGP segments are, as it says, distributed by your IGP. IGP are your interior gateway routing protocol. So with the, for the segment routing, we can use ISIS as one of the IGP or OSPF as the another IGP. And both of these IGP has the capability to distribute in, as a segments for your segment routing. So here we will have something called a prefix segments and there is something called adjacency segments. So means the neighbor, the segment which is between the neighbors and a prefix segment which is unique to that particular node. So if you take a look at example here, so in this particular example, we are saying IGP prefix segment. We are talking about the prefix segment. So if you take a look in this topology, there are five nodes, one, two, three, four, five. So now for the first node, we are saying a global segment. So the global segment will start with the label 16,000, which is our base plus an index. And these are advertised at their index. So now this is one, this is router one. So it will be 16,000 plus one. So this router's a global segment or the pref uh, global segment will be 16,001. 
here it's 16,002, 16,003, 16,004 and 16,005 and then so on. And it clearly says all node uses default sRGB. So now we are saying, okay, hey, the router one and these are distributed by either OSPF or ISIS. Now, this is just simply a path that so you okay, oh, from, to go from router one to five, we can, either we can take this path, we can go from one to two and then two to five. Similarly, we are saying router three, you need to reach 16,005. And the 16,005 is the unique label or the prefix SID for this particular router. So this particular router's prefix SID is 16,005. The reason is 16,000 our base and the index value is five here. Now, if you we continue to take a look at here in the second case. Now here, again, pretty much the similar stuff. But here we are saying, okay, hey, you know, the router one has, there are two potential paths to reach to router four. So now the router one can go via two to four or it can go via three to four. So that's what it says, the shortest path to the IGP prefix, it's an equal cost multipath aware. That's why we can take any of the paths. Either we can go from one to two to four or we can go from one to three to four. And again, 16,004 is the prefix said for this particular node. And this is unique into this topology. No other node has 16,004 as its prefix said basically. Now this was the global or the prefix set that we saw and these prefix set had a global meaning into the topology. So like this node has 16,001, 2, 3, 4 and, and so on. Then we talked about there's another type of segments which are called your urgency segments. And we talked about these are local segment means they only have a significance local to that particular router. Again, these are also advertised as a label values. And again, these can be distributed by both ISIS or OSPF. So now if you take a look at here, the router 2 is a neighbor to router 5 as well it's neighbor to router 4. So if we talk about the global sets here, each router have a global set of in this case is base plus 1, base plus 2, base plus 3, base plus 4 and base plus 5 which is 16,001, 16,002, 3, 4 and 5. Now when we talk about the adjacency segment, these are the links which are adjacent to a router. So if you look at from router's 2 perspective, it says adjacency to 4. So this link between 2 and 4 has been assigned a dynamic label that starts with 24,000 that we saw the range for the dynamic label starts from 24,000 any because the sRGB block starts from 16,000 to 2399. So now these are our dynamic label. So now there is a label or there is a label that is being assigned to this particular link and the label is 24024. Now, similarly, if you see the link between two and five also has been assigned a adjacency SID and that is again also 24025. Again, these labels starts from 24,000 because these are dynamic label. And the last values, the last two digits you see are being derived from lower to higher. So it says two to four. That's why you see two to four. Now this link says two to five. That's the value two to five. So these labels have only a local significance. So router will know, router one will not know about any of these urgency SID. So because these are only significant to this local router too. If there is some decision that we need to make, make this router can make a decision based on these urgency SID also. Again, don't worry, we will go ahead and see in the hands-on how these things will come into the play. But this is something to remember that these are local segments has only local significance to the local router while these prefix sets they were global and they needs to be unique throughout the network now okay here is a good example as the topology shows so now in this case we are saying okay hey we need to send a traffic from router 1 to router 4 so again we saw there were two possible paths that the router 1 can take it can go via 2 to 4 and 3 to 4 and now we are saying, okay, hey, steer traffic. So if you take a look at this label stack, in the label stack, we are saying, okay, here, our one. First, you need to go to 16,004, which is the prefix set for router 4. To reach the router 4, you can either go via 2 to 4 or you can go via 3 to 5. But once you reach on 4, if you take a look at, we are saying, okay, hey, use this urgency set, and the set number is 24045. So means once you are there, 
make use of the local urgency SID which is only significant to this router and make a decision to reach router 5. That's what why you see 24045. So once you reach here, the first top label will be removed. Then on the router, we are left with this particular label stack 24045 and packets to 5. Now once we reach here, we can take off. It will take a look at, okay, hey, 2405 is the this link's urgency SID. So let me send the traffic onto this particular link and that's how the traffic will reach here. So that's how the router can make use of both these prefixes which are unique to the whole domain and these urgency SID which are local significant only to this particular router here. And that's how we can combine both the global as well as local segments while creating this list of set stack simply. And again, I just, you know, just to reference that all of these nodes have same sRGB block. That is kind of a very brief introduction about the segment uh, uh, routing. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the other second section here.